guys, it's Chessa with Checker. Welcome to the second episode of our Market Share Social Quilting event. It's a virtual sharing of the newest quilting and sewing products to help your business grow. May is traditionally when in-person spring market takes place, but no worries, we have a special month planned to virtually share hundreds of products and fabric. To make ordering easy for you, there is a link in the description to all the items that are being shown today. If you have a question or would like to take a second look, pop it in the comments and I will answer it at the end. It's always fun to see where you are watching from, so make sure you leave a comment with your shop name and location. Don't forget about our Q&A at the end, plus our buyers are standing by and oftentimes our vendors are as well to be able to answer you while we're live. Today we have invited back Maria DeGroote, our Creative Grid Specialist. She will be showing the latest quilt ruler and tools from Creative Grids. If you do need to step away and tend to your store, no worries, because this video stays on Facebook and you can just stop back and watch at your convenience. Let's see who's watching today. Hello May from Missouri. Hello Pat on the back from Arizona. Hello, Tony from So Blessed in Georgia. Glenda from Summer Breeze Quilting in Pennsylvania. And Nancy from Now and Then Fabrics in Ohio. Thanks for tuning in today, guys. And we're gonna start with the stunning quilt that is hanging behind me. This is Sisterhood from Seems Like a Dream Quilt Designs. So as you can see, it is quite large. You got a lot of variety of different blocks. And there's actually 30 different blocks that highlight different techniques. The pattern is broken into 10 months, three blocks per month, and they're grouped by technique. All the blocks have been named to celebrate women who have been important in, in an influential part of our lives. There are three sizes, a lap, a quilt, or a lap, a small bed quilt, and a large bed quilt, which is what is behind me. They all use um, half yard cuts of 12 different fabrics and then your background fabric that's what varies depending on what size you're doing and your backing and your binding so you will all make each one of these blocks but it's up to you like in the corners here you can't really see but there's just a lot of white space to show off the quilting so that's how we got the larger size you can just do the blocks and bind it and be done you'll just have to make the decision when you get ready to do it Next, I have a quilt from Whole Circle Studio. This is Big Island Blooms. Nice catch. <laughs> so this is a modern twist on the traditional drunkard's path block, and your instructions include the templates and for a baby throw twin and queen size. I love it. I know. I really like the colors that are in tune and like echoing the quilting. Mm -hmm. Very cute. <clears throat> and if you can't quite see it, here's the, the block. You always have a curve for the most of it, and a little corner piece to finish up that square, and then depending where the colors are, you end up with this. Looks very intricate, but it's not that hard. It's not that hard. We heard it from Maria, guys. It's not that <laughs> hard. Hold her to it. Up next from Quilter's Paradise are, there are 10 different styles of these 17 ounce engraved stemless wine glasses. I put some fabric on the inside to kind of hopefully help you see it. Is that readable, Cindy? Yes, it is. Okay. So this one, where you fill it up, you can stitch straight. You're gonna have a little bit of crooked stitch. And if you fill it all the way to the top, like I do, you're gonna need to break out your seam ripper. This one it says wine a little, laugh a lot. My husband's going to be really bad when I bring home another glass, but you know, it is what it is. So like I said, there are 10 different styles. They are all available on checkerdisc.com. These are super handy as tumblers for, um, it doesn't have to be wine. It can be a soft drink, juice. You can even put them in your sewing room and maybe put your needles in it or store your buttons, pens. It's not only just perfect for yourself, it's great as a gift for those of you who have lovely people in your life. And 
their dishwasher safe. That's the big thing for me. I want to be able to put it in a dishwasher. I never had a dishwasher until I moved out on my own. And now I use it all the time. So again, see all the styles on checkerdisc.com. I'm going to hand these to you so you don't get knocked around. Thank you. Because I will break them. Now we're going to move on to the table here. I have Quilts of Guise Bend. This is a playing cards. There's a two deck set. So let's just. Oops. Take a few rosary cutters. <laughs> Don't recommend doing that. Oh, Jessa. <laughs> Could get yelled at later. Never. I'll get reprimand later. But you got your beautiful cards. You got two different styles of decks. You can see the patterns continue onto your diamonds and your aces, your hearts. So this is a two pack deck, or two deck pack, mm -hmm. two deck pack. You see you got this more kind of neutrals and then another kind of bright one. So you can build a winning hand on game night or deal for solitaire. Or you guys know me, I like just putting things on display because I think they're pretty. Thank you. Next up I have some books. First is Cross Stitch for the Soul. These are all by David and Charles. This one has 20 designs for you to love. It is a collection of beautifully designed motivational and inspirational quotes that are rendered in easy cross stitching techniques. So you got it nice in color and laid out, broken down. This is designed by the leading cross stitch designer, Emma Congdon, AKA Stitch Rovia whose modern styling appeals to crafters of all ages and abilities. These inspiring quotes will provide comfort, motivate, and all, just are all around positive spins on life. Just beautiful. They are powerful and just, there'd be a nice little you know, frame it and just look at it from time to time. So this is cross stitch for the heart. Up next is thread painting. Now I just love this book. I don't know if you can <coughs> tell, but it's kind of got a metallic on it. And I just think that's so pretty and it's got this adorable bee on it. So thread painting is a form of embroidery that creates realistic lifelike effects just using one stitch. You can see here the tree coming together. In this step-by-step -step guide from David and Charles, embroidery artist Emily Ferris has created five exclusive patterns to inspire by nature. You got your mushrooms. You have a bird. And it, you see their step-by-step color instructions. You can see it slowly layering, coming together. My favorite was in the back here. This adorable bee that was on the cover. So, but on the back of the book, there are iron on transfers. Um, you can do that 10 times. There's enough for 10 per pattern. You have the options without background, and you can do one with background. So, that's nice. Have some choices. Next is Christmas at Cowslip, Christmas Sewing and Quilting Projects. This is the last book I have today from David and Charles. And it is a compilation of the best festive sewing projects from Joe Cowell's two books, Cushions and Quilts and Patchwork Quilts and Gifts. This collection of festive projects is the perfect resource for all of your seasonal sewing. Christmas at Cowslip. 
before I move on from books, I have a very exciting virtual event that CNT Publishing is hosting just for Checker customers. It's free to attend CNT's virtual event, and it is a spring retreat where you will learn about their new spring releases. The event is May 17th, and we're adding a link in the comments for you to sign up in case you missed the email. Are we sending another email reminder, Cindy? Yes, we sent one yesterday, and there'll be another one next week. Perfect, so make sure you check your email. It is a three-hour live interaction showcasing live authors that are having craft demos, lectures, tips on how to sell the CNT titles successfully in your store. You're going to meet some of your favorite quilt authors like Carol Dope, Jennifer Sampu, and many others. And then you can share everything you learned with your customers with the easy to follow class plans and supply lists that you will be receiving. You're not going to want to miss it, so make sure you register at the link that we're going to put in the comments for access to all of the perks, plus the Zoom link for the live event. Oh, and there is a giveaway, actually giveaway opportunities for the folks that attend the live portion from CNT, Creative Grids, the Gypsy Quilter, and other popular vendors from Checker. It's valued at over a thousand dollars. So again, visit the link that's going to be in the comments for all of the details. Now let's move on to more project samples since you guys seem to always love those and so do I. So we have the Twister Floral Garden from Twister Sisters. Twister Sisters design here. This is full of cheerful Twister pinwheels, flowers. It's going to brighten any room. It's perfect for summer or spring. You can make it as a wall hanging using the itty bitty twister, which is the sample I have here. And they were nice enough to send the super adorable hanger. You also have the opportunity to make it as a table runner, which would be about 12 by 31 inches. This one is five by 16 inches. So this is Twister Flower Garden. There's another one where he added to the project she wants to do. Don't tell all my secrets. <laughs> They're going to start holding you to it. Like, we want to see Maria's version. Yeah. Um, next, we have from Carolina Moore is the Patriot Quilt. This is the perfect size to use instead of a wreath on your door for the patriotic holidays. It can be also used as decor for your indoors. The secret behind this fun mini quilt is the stars that were made with the Creative Grid st Strippy Stars tool, which was designed by Deb Heatherly. So you're going to make quick and simple stars without needing to square <coughs> up endless half-square triangles. Thank you. Next from Carolina is called Next Year's Tree Skirt. So this is just, yeah, we don't have time on it a little bit. So as many tree skirts, you have the opening. So this was hand pieced using traditional EPP methods. Your instructions for glue basting, sewing, and adding a facing are all included in the pattern. The EPP facing method is used to finish the edges of the tree skirt, keeping the scallop light edge without needing to bond knots find non-right angles and the instructions are also provide trimming options for the edges so that the tree skirt can be bound traditionally so they can't see it but can you see all these tiny little stitches along here yeah the thing about English paper piecing is that it is handwork <clears throat> and you stitch all those little hexagons and edges together with a hand sewing needle so it's an exercise in patience, but it's so beautiful when it's done. Can we show them in the back? Yeah. Look at her edge of hexagons along the outside edge there. Isn't that gorgeous? It is super cute. And here you can really see the fun quilting that she yeah. did inside. Very cute. Very cool. Thanks, Carolina. Next up, I have some of you guys' favorite pens from Pilot Pen Corporation of America. You have the friction pens. 
So the friction pens, we all know you can write in a race and rewrite repeatedly without damaging your documents. There's no wear or tear and they have a unique thermal sensitive gel ink formula that disappears with the erasing friction. Now it, you can also use that to mark <laughs> what? A note under the door. <laughs> <laughs> you can also use these to mark on your fabric. We do always recommend that you test it on a piece of fabric, the piece of fabric you're going to be working on. Test it first just to make sure you're not going to run into any issues. These deliver vivid, smooth writing in 16 vibrant shades. There are multiple pen styles available you've probably seen on our website. You have fine point, fine liner, ball tip, there's even highlighters. When we had samples of those, I probably took all of them because I really like the idea of being able to highlight and then erase it because I have a tendency to highlight everything. And it's like, why do they even bother highlighting? So, <laughs> but Pilot Pen of America, some more friction colors and styles. Lastly, before we bring Maria back out here, I have three books from the very popular Arthur, author, oh, Arthur, that's my husband's name. <laughs> I accidentally, actually when I met him, wrote his name as author, and he made sure to correct me that it's Arthur, like the king. Oh. <laughs> so, um, these are by the popular author, Patience Griffin. You have Once Upon a Cabin, One Snowy Night, and The Wishing Quilt. The Wishing Quilt is set in Texas and is about to be wrapped up in love and homespun perfection with this new contemporary romance anthology featuring novellas from legendary bestseller authors Jody Thomas, Lori Wilde, and Patience Griffin. The author was kind enough to send us an advanced reader signed copy of The Wishing Quilt, even though it will not be released until August. She also sent us signed copies of the other two books that I mentioned <laughs> earlier. So our checker customers will have a chance to win this copy as well as the other signed copies. You're gonna wanna stay tuned for the details on how to enter. We also have the companion pattern, Once Upon a ca Cabin Quilt, as well as the companion for One Snowy Night, which is Izzy's Tree Quilt. Information on these, Patient Griffin's Book Club, and Block of the Months will be included for the giveaway winter. So and now I'm gonna go ahead and hand us off to Maria. And I'll be back in a bit. <coughs> Just a minute here. I know when I'm not standing here, it's hard to hear me. So if there's something that we were talking about that you need more info on, please make sure you put it in the comments so that we can readdress it if needed. <coughs> so I, I have to tell you that this is almost a year since I, I've been here. And I, can't believe, party. I cannot believe it's been a year already. It wasn't the shelf I knocked <laughs> over this time. <laughs> here, I'm like, oh, I'm just putting things out of Maria's way here. I'm coming I know. Up we, we weren't thinking about this before we got started, but when I first got here, uh, the fold the corner clipper extra large had just come out. So I want to show you a couple things with that. tools here. So the folded corner clipper is by Susan Nelson. I'm going to make sure I said her name right. A lot of designers in my head these days. So originally we came out with the 5 inch version and then we came out with the 10 inch version. So now you can work with pieces as large as layer cakes or a 10 inch border if you're cutting mitered seams, etc. I'm going to have Cindy switch to the table here. I'm going to show you a couple examples. Am I in screen there? Yes, you are. Woohoo! Yes! I came down just a wee bit. Towards me? Yeah. 
Better? Okay. So here I just have a, a 10 inch square and I'm going to make a snowball block which is adding triangles to the corners of all four corners. I have drawn a line from corner to corner which is the traditional way to do this. This one I even stitched so I can flip my little white corner over there. For the rest of them I want to show you how clever this folded corner clipper is. Yes, I've drawn the line but I can take those pins out move them so I don't try to rotary cut them. And I'm going to line up this folded corner clipper. These are three and a half inch squares, so whichever size square you're using, you're going to find that measurement on the ruler. Line it up underneath that ruler just like this. Get your rotary cutter out, cut, pull that away, go to the sewing machine and stitch. So I don't need that line drawn. I'm going to save myself literally hours of time on some projects by using the folded corner clipper to clip that corner off before I stitch it onto the corner of my blocks. Not only is it handy for blocks, I need a magnet for pins when I'm up here, I think. <laughs> we probably have one in the building somewhere, don't we? So this is an example of a strip that gets a triangle added to the corner, same process. I drew a line and I stitched it, but I could also have just started with the strip, the square, and one of my folded corner clippers. The little guy is very handy for projects this size. You can see how easy it is to work with the big one as well. There's my two and a half inch mark because it's a two and a half inch square. I'm going to cut that off, pull that corner away, go back and stitch it, and I've got a triangle added to the corner just that quick. So, folded corner clippers have been here for just about a year, and we love them. Okay, the scallop template came out shortly after I arrived. Everyone will recognize the dinosaur. He's been hanging around with me for a while now. <coughs> Thank you, Jessa. I feel like a gypsy. <laughs> if we were at market, I would probably have suitcases under the table or bins full of stuff like this to show, and I would just keep rotating through the products. So it might be Gypsy Quilter stuff now, along with the Creative Grid, along with who knows what else somebody's going to have a question press. on. Oh yeah, Cutler's Press Patterns, etc. That's what that is. Right. So let's show you this. You want to hold a corner for me? Yeah. Miss Chessa, I'll we're help switching you. spots you here. Help me. I know. So it's been, boy, since this came out months ago, um, we pulled one of the dinosaur panels out of stock. Checker and I, exclusive. Yeah, checker exclusive. Those are printed just for us, right? Jeff's naughty <coughs> said yes for those of you who can't yeah, hear him. You can't hear his head <laughs> rattle. Yes. <laughs> so I simply added borders around that outside edge, and then I used the scallop template to create the scallop border. The beautiful thing about the scallop template is that it is totally custom to your taste and design. So I'm going to show you a couple of things here on the table to kind of clarify that. So I unpack my pile. I'm just dropping debris everywhere. Somebody will pick up later, right? Yeah, you will. <laughs> So I pulled a piece of fabric that's just got these beautiful flowers on it. And I want to make sure I'm in the screen there. Is that good? I'm going to show this little corner here. Yep. So when I did the dinosaur, I cut the papers like she says. It's all scrap paper, so there might be notes on the back. It might be printouts that I needed and then don't need any more, so I got a little carried away with my paper pieces, but you can see I have quite a collection. So I chose the large scallop. If I show you here quick first, you've got the option for the curved corner, 
and there's markings for small, medium, and large. I can do a large hill and valley, which is two and a half inches and larger. The medium starts at two inches, but you can go as large as you want. And the small is one and a half inches up to whatever you're designing. So for this one, I'm going to use the large because I put a six inch border on there. For the dinosaur, I actually clip the pieces together because with those exclusive panels, I can use that again. I'll show you my corner pieces. Doesn't everyone's sewing table look like this? Yeah. <laughs> so here, I've got one of the hills or the corners, but I connect. Oh, thank you. You knew I was going to ask for that mind. next, right? <laughs> I need my marking pen, yeah. So here I've connected a hill and a valley to each side to form that corner. Because this one's a little bit bigger than the dinosaur, I'm going to slide it all the way out to the edge here. If I was worried about it being exactly the same distance away from the seam line, I would cut my papers whatever width my border is and work from there. But this is where we're going to start. I'm going to take my friction pen because I love them. I'm excited to see Chessa showing some more of those today. I will tell you that the heat of your hand can make that ink disappear sometimes too. And of course an iron. So if you're marking and then think, oh I gotta iron this first, <laughs> your marks are gonna go away. <laughs> but good news, you can always put them back on again. Like here, if I'm getting it on my paper, I can go back and iron that and get rid of it later. But before I even layer my quilt, I am gonna mark out that scallop so that I can do some fancy quilting in that spot there. To continue the scallop, I'm gonna grab a hill and a valley, and I'm gonna play. I'm gonna put that valley next to it, and I want that close up to that edge there. Another valley over here, up to a hill, and I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna slide them left and right in order to fill up the space the way I think it looks the best. Maybe I'm going to make a very shallow valley, or maybe I'm going to make it even wider. Totally depends on what I'm in the mood for. So there's an example of how I did the dinosaur. <coughs> I quick put borders on another little one. Here's a table runner example. So I've got a much more shallow border on there. And for this one, I cut the medium hill and valley, which I've never used yet. I'm going to start with one of my corner pieces. See that line right there? I'm going to hit that line right on the seam there to make sure that I'm even. And I may have to fold it back and forth a little bit to make sure I'm there. There's my corner. I'm going to come back with my medium scallop and position it how I think it looks the best. Maybe it's right about there. Maybe I'm going to spread it out just a little bit. Put another one over here. Put another one over here. And I'm going to create that scallop around a table runner just that easy. So it doesn't have to be a big quilt. It can be a small one. And that scallop template is going to work for just about anything that you want to put a scallop on. You might have to call time on me if I'm still talking and Jeff needs to get up here. <laughs> <coughs> He's okay. <laughs> All right. After the scallop comes, I'm going to scroll my words down there a little bit. I'm trying to stick to the script this time, not just go, you know, on my own. Sometimes I tell you what I want to talk about and then I just go haywire with whatever I feel like. So next, I think, came the Alaska ruler. Thank you so much, Chessa. So let's get Alaska out here. This was created with Edita Sitar, and if you know her quilts, you know that the Alaska quilt is one of the more famous ones that she's done. Not that they're not all famous, because I think they're all really fantastic, but this particular quilt pattern used four different templates. So Creative Grid combined those four all into one. So you can use this to make her Alaska pattern, but you can also choose what size blocks you want to make now and make your own custom size. 
So I think they range from nine inches up to 16 inches is the largest one. If I'd look at my insert quick, I can tell you that for sure. But you can do half square triangles with this. You can cut diamonds, you're gonna cut kites, you're gonna cut wedges, all kinds of stuff. So let's take a look at the blocks that we did with this. This is one of the more simple ones. Here is a simple wedge cut with this section of the ruler. Here is that wedge again, but with a half square triangle up in the corner. So you're cutting all the same piece, just in different colors and adding that corner piece to create a block. Here is the wedge again, but with the corner added to it. So you're gonna cut your strip like this, move it over and line these lines up again and cut the other edge to form that kite. The diamonds I'm gonna cut from a strip. And if I lay that on there just right, of course you're gonna think seam allowance. You see these dotted lines right here? There's that, well, let's say, two and a half inch strip cutting the diamonds from there for this particular block. For the little triangles in this outer corner, I'm going to cut a wedge just like this. So lots of triangles, lots of angles, some diamonds, etc. This is a 12 and a half inch block, but you've got uh, three other choices depending on what size quilt you're trying to make. Here's that same wedge again. Here's the wedge as well, but it's built with a diamond and two triangles again, and a half square triangle on the corner. Same process, I'm gonna cut my diamonds, I'm gonna cut wedges, I'm gonna cut half square triangles, and then other wedges to fill in the middle. <clears throat> There's another example, which I love. I love the colors together. Matches your outfit. I was kinda inspired by the Creative Grid mat probably in my head as I was picking them, but does show up really well. And this one's probably my favorite. These are the same wedges, but I've got a green diamond here, where I've got a gray diamond here, white triangles at the top, green at the top of this one, finished off with white in the corner to make that design really stand out. Let's switch views again. I know since she came out with this. She's also done a mystery quilt that you'll have to check out at Laundry Basket Quilts. And it uses this, and I think there's one other shape maybe that she put in there, but it's called Montana. She did a great job with the diamonds and the shapes that this template can cut. And finishes it off with her own special flair like always. But be sure to check out the Alaska Ruler from Edit a Sitar. I think Linda said she just ordered it. All right. I love the feedback when you have a chance to work with it. It's always fun to hear how much you like things and what you did. I like the switch off where I, I just know. hand you stuff. <laughs> I like doing it on my end too. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna grab the next pile here. <clears throat> so we get we get requests for all kinds of things. Sometimes it's a ruler to do something special. Um, sometimes it's requests for instructions and cut charts. How do I do this? I lost my instructions, etc. So I get to hear a lot, which is kind of fun for me because it's nice to know what people are looking for. So <clears throat> I think the first two came out right when I got here. Mm -hmm. We've created left-handed versions of some of our best-selling rulers. Here I've got the six and a half inch square. If you look at the numbering system on here, the numbers are simply mirror imaged from the original. So when you're cutting on the left-handed side, you no longer have to read those numbers upside down and sideways, which I think is great for left-handed cutters. The originals have the white circles and numbers starting in this corner, working their way across and down. So on this left-handed version, it is simply the opposite. They all have our classic grip. <clears throat> they all have the quarter inch and eighth inch marks in the one inch grids. Black numbers and white circles. The turnaround feature means you've got white numbers in black circles. And it comes in four different sizes right now. So I've got the six and a half inch square, the six 
six and a half by 24 and a half inch rectangle, which I think is probably the size I use the most when I'm cutting. Mm -hmm. It's just handy for so mm -hmm. many things. Next, we came out with the six and a half by 12 and a half. <coughs> and then the 12 and a half inch square. And I want to show you on this one, can you see this little hand right here? That is your cue for the fact that it's a left-handed ruler. So if you don't notice that the numbers are different from the originals, look for that little black hand. And the labels have got a teal band with a black hand on it to also show you that they are left-handed versions. Some of my favorite features on the 6x12, for instance, I've got a 45 degree line that goes here and here, and it intersects a quarter of an inch away from the edge. So if you're trimming blocks, or you want to make sure you've got seam allowance in some area of the quilt, it's clearly marked right there. They also all have the centering lines like our regular rulers do. 45s and 60s on some of them, 45s on all of them. So same great features, same great company, but now those left-handed cutters can read them right side up from the left. And let's see, <clears throat> keep, yeah, keep going, my skinny pineapple, oh, my favorite. Yeah, what can we get back in the box? Not much. So to give you a time perspective, when I first got here, which was in June, this skinny pineapple tool was not quite ready for market. Um, we had an etched version, that means all these lines on here were only etched on a piece of plexiglass. There was no labeling, no grip, no nothing, because we were still testing and getting it ready to go. We revealed this in January this year, so from June to January, that gives you a good idea about timeline for some of the um, rulers that we produce and the amount of work that goes into them in the background. So I think that's super interesting. This one does a pineapple block just like the originals do, but you can do up to a 12 and a half inch block. You can also stop, you can't see, this is my project box. I have extra pieces in here, extra blocks, extra parts that didn't get put into a project and I hang on to them for days like today when we have to show things. So here is the small, oops, he flew. <laughs> the smallest block that you're going to do with the ruler. And if I hold this up, you can see there's an extra line of grip along this edge right here to do a six and a half inch block. If I wanted to do a nine and a half inch, that's how big it's going to be. Again, extra grip outlining for trimming. And this is the 12 and a half inch block. If you haven't trimmed the pineapple tool before, you can only trim two sides at a time because I like to turn it around and trim the other two. So the idea is that final squaring up, you're gonna go along these outside lines, turn the block at, around, and trim those two lines again. So don't be alarmed that it's not a full square. You need this angled line for trimming every other round or color, and this one for trimming the other two. So since Jean Ann came out with that, oh, forgot to mention, Jean Ann Wright is the designer of the pineapple trim tools. And I am obsessed with pineapple blocks right now. I just think they're gorgeous and fun. I think they're fun. I think the fact that I get to sew, press, trim, sew, press, trim, etc., appeals to me the most because at the end, there's no more trimming to do. You're going to square it up with that final trim and your block is done. So she gave a little update to the original pineapple and the pineapple mini. Do you have that? <clears throat> so the original pineapple trim tool looks like this. And I got a let's say six, eight, and ten inch block. I don't quite have the blocks all memorized for all of these, but you can stop at six inches, go up to eight inches, or do the full template at ten. The mini is just smaller than the original. Same kind of layout as the 12 inch skinny, but different sizes, different size blocks that you're gonna, or logs that you're gonna add to it. And this one will do four, five, and six inch. So you're just stopping at various rounds as you go around the, the tool. 
and I'm going to show you this great project she did. A loose press pattern? Yes. Um, CLP JAW086, I think. Wow, Not bad, huh? <laughs> yeah, I'm working on that. So here is what she's calling a pop out pineapple block. So she's using the mini for the middle of the square and then switching to the original for the rest of the square. We quilted the block. Well, I quilted this one. She did her version and I did mine here. Quilted that block and put binding around it in order to create the bag. And on the other side, she just flopped the colors. So I'm calling it the half and half patriotic bag. One side is red with a blue pineapple block on the front. The other side is blue with a red one. Even the handles are half and half. One is blue, one is red. And the inside, look how fun that is, half blue and half red. So this was kind of fun to put together. <clears throat> and I want to show you really quick how I organize this stuff. Let me switch to the table one more time. I love I know I'm supposed to be talking creative grids, but I love our ABC 123 pins from Gypsy Quilter. Here is my centers. There's round one that I put a number one on. Here's round two. Round three. Round four. And etc. I could use the letters if I wanted to, but I like to keep that numerical sequence going. I've got this whole pile ready to go up to 13 pieces to put into this block. This one's going to start with a red center, blue mini tool, and then using the red for the original. So you can organize however you want, but I love these pins. And here, just to give you an idea of the steps. There is after round one, and I use more of my pins to keep it straight. And there is round two, and there is round three, and four, etc. So you're going to start small, blow it out to big when you get done, and there is a pineapple pop out, or pop, so I still didn't say it right, pop <laughs> out pineapple block. <laughs> so we'll use a couple of CLPs presses with that method, right? Yes, there's a quilt and a table runner. The quilt you've seen behind us before, it's not up there right now, but I didn't have the tote bag ready to show you last time, so now I've got the tote bag ready to go, and it is that quick. The pineapple pop-out tote. I think I said that right this time. Yeah. Okay. Two more treats for you. And then we'll get Jeff up here with his fabrics. All right, machine quilting tools are next. So those that like to use rulers will know that we have got, well, as of now, we have 12. As of a week ago, we only had nine. But these are the newest machine quilting tools from Angela Walters. We've got dot, let's see, what order did I go in up there? Oh, okay. <clears throat> Sometimes I have to remind myself what I meant to say, you know, after you say creative grid grip and the black and white lines, etc., I forget to mention them again, but even the machine quilting tools have got our signature grip. So until you apply a little bit of pressure, you can move these around on the fabric, but once you give a little bit of pressure, they stay put on the quilt while you quilt. There are black and white markings to help you line up from one row of stitching to another and to facilitate placement wherever you want it on the quilt. There are needle stops. Smiley here is a good one to point that out on. And it looks like a smile, doesn't it? There's a needle stop right here. You see this little edge here? The ruler foot's gonna stop there so you can move that ruler and stitch some more and stop again at the stop. You're gonna quilt all the way around from point to point or maybe you want a smaller smile and you're gonna do that from here to here. Angela's done a great job with some samples and pictures that she's promoting the rulers with. We have PDFs that show the designs that you can create and all of that. Um, 
for smiley, you can use smiley for arcs and curved echoes, curved motifs with gentle arcs, continuous curves, cables, and more. Dot reminds me of dot to dot quilting. And Sasha, I'm sorry, I know I'm skipping all around. <laughs> You'll all just get used to that eventually. This one's got some needle stops too. There's a stop right up here. You're gonna quilt around to that corner and stop right down here. There's a little edge right there to stop with that ruler foot. If you wanna use the inside, you've got stops here, here, and here, so that you can just pause a second before you go another direction. Same features as all of them with the grip and the lines. Use this one for geometric shapes, dot to dot quilting, stitching in the ditch, some echo lines, triangles, wedges, and lots more. My favorite of the three, which I will admit I have a favorite, I try not to be partial, let's see, I try to be impartial, but sometimes you just can't help it. Petunia is by far my favorite of these three designs because it's that time of year. I just love flowers and I love springtime and the birds chirping outside and the designs I can create with this are just really happy and fun. So there are needle stops here as well, here at the bottom of the petal. You're gonna quilt all the way around those edges and stop again, move it over, quilt some more. Or you're gonna use the inside here to create half circles or circles. You can use it for border designs, for flower meandering. So maybe I'm gonna start with this and then I'm gonna echo those petals out and away as I go. And I even quilted one of our bowls with this. If you can see that design or not. I used petunia to do that little flower design on the edge of the bowl. When you quilt these, they're laying flat, so you don't have to do three-dimensional quilting or anything like that, but it is fun to practice with these designs on something small like the bowls. So <clears throat> get them out, use them. Maybe you're gonna draw lines around them before you quilt instead of holding it while you quilt. It doesn't have to be exactly the way we tell you they're meant to be. So use your tools. You've got your friction pens and other marking tools that you can use to get yourself familiar with the directions those rulers are going to take you and eventually you'll be quilting with them in no time. So last but not least for me today, as of a week ago we didn't have this either so we came out with four things on the fourth last week. I think that was kind of the funny thing. We have got, do you want to And I did knock it over. I know, it struck <laughs> me out. <laughs> so this is the Bowl Cozy template set. And I know I showed you this really quick last week, but I wanted to bring it out again. You can do two different size bowls with this. You can use your rotary cutter around this. So no more scissor cutting around those shapes if you don't want to. Um, I love the versatility. It works great with our Gypsy Quilter pre-cut battings. It has our exclusive grip just like all the other rulers do. There's grip all the way around the outside edges of this, so it's not gonna slip and move while you're cutting. And there's a QR code that you can scan and go see a video for more details on how to make the bowls. But I wanted to show you a little bit of inspiration. Go back down to the table again. Very basic, it's not even quite a square, that's almost a square. I'm going to take that fabric and fold it in fours. And lay the folded edge marks on my template right on the folded edges for the bowl. Use my rotary cutter to cut all the way around. When I open it up, it's going to have four sections. Just like that. Whether you just layer it with a pre-cut or you cut that batting to match, it's going to look like that's the simplest quilting I know how to do, corner to corner. Fold those darts to stitch them together. Get creative with your stitches or not. Very fun and easy gifts to make. We'll give you a little, little slideshow here. Here is the one I did with Petunia. And this is the large bowl cozy, so you would use the biggest shape for that. Here's a small one. Use one of the other machine quilting tools. I think this one is Taj. Can you see Taj in the middle there? 
And we've got it flipped so that the black is on the inside, but maybe you want the green on the inside. They are reversible, interchangeable, washable, etc. This one, I, I, you know, sometimes like to put binding on things, so I put binding around that edge. Sometimes. She <laughs> okay. loves her binding. <laughs> I do, I love to bind. <laughs> this one, I did not. I just sewed those edges together and turned them right side out, so you've got lots of variables and possibilities. Here's another big one with some fun plaid fabric in the middle and some polka dot binding to match. Here's some fun quilting on the back side. This one might be one of my favorites too. I love the color for one thing. Obviously, I'm dressed to match my bowl today. <laughs> but if I flip it over, do you see this design here? This is Elvira, one of the machine quilting tools which we probably have to add to the list because I didn't give you that before. But Elvira is another one of Angela's tools and I love the curvy shape that it creates. I simply move it left and right to put those little swirls wherever I want them and quilt my bowl. Layer, one of the layers, all of the layers. So, and then for more comparison, there is the small bowl sitting inside the large one. Yes, they are meant for um, microwave safe but I will tell you a little secret. Sometimes this might be full of spools of thread if I'm working on something that I have multiple colors going on. I've hauled kids' toys in the one this size, you know, snacks. You can fill it with apples and oranges to take on a picnic. It's washable, so when you get back, if it got sticky from something, you just throw it in the washer. Balls of yarn, whatever you have that needs containment, and hauling somewhere. So don't be limited by just what it's meant for. Steph's gonna wear one as a hat. <laughs> oh, I would love that. Uh, we need pictures of that for sure. So good to see everyone and please ask questions that we'll get to at the end here, but thrilled to be back again. And I'm gonna turn it over to Jeff and his fabric. Thank you. And get all of my things out of your way here. <laughs> All right, thanks Chessa and Maria for letting me sneak on here <laughs> right at the end. Just what I just really want to get on for just a few seconds. I don't have, normally when I'm on here, I have new fabric to show you. Um, this week I don't. I have uh, Riley Blake and Henry Glass to show you next week though. So tune in next week if you want to see those two lines and we'll have those. But this week I want to talk to stores in particular about a promotion we have coming up next week um, uh, during our really our market share, that's our primary week for the market share. So in addition to the items that we already have in the sale flyer, we're gonna have a few thread promotions that'll last all next week. And we're also gonna have a big Riley Blake basics promotion. Um, all their fabrics, and I've got, I brought a whole list here. I um, mean, there's over 30 different groups. Riley Blake offers a great basics line. Um, uh, anything from solids to uh, hashtags and stripes. I mean, I've got a whole, we've got blenders and all the Lori, Lori Holt uh, B Basics. We've got some of my. Supposed to iron. I'm supposed to iron. <laughs> there's I did. irons everywhere here. I, I did. You with that. Right, there's all kinds of iron. You could have. You could have helped me, but <laughs> it's a really big line. I want you to make sure you remember to check with your customer sales rep or your sales rep or log on to our website to see the details of the promotion next week. But mm -hmm. it will begin on Monday and it will go all the way through Sunday uh, the 22nd. So We're emailing to probably? We're also going to email out to all the stores and, uh, and customers. So I just wanted to uh, share that with you. Make sure you tune in next week. We can talk more about fabric and check our website for all these great things. But this, was a, this will be a nice promotion, a nice sale for those stores. So make sure you... Check that out. Are those all the same fabric that you're not opening those up to show us? There, if you'd like, I can. Oh, I, there, there's we so like many. The I mean, we have so many here. <laughs> you're, you're all iron you're all very aware of all the Riley Blake basics, but there's there's beautiful. Here's some shades. This has been. Look how big that is. Nice blender oh. line. I'm doing this for Maria. She loves this. <laughs> What do we have? Shabby. This one was a really nice line. Don't forget the one that says sparkles. You only like sparkles. Sparkles? Sparkler? 
and I showed this one already, Be Basics. This one is very popular to go along with uh, Be Ginghams, Be Backgrounds, all Lori Holtz. I love it. Really nice stuff. A lot of this stuff is, is <laughs> there's some 15 yard bolts, but the really nice thing about Riley Blake Basics is so much of it is on 10 yard bolts, so it's really shop friendly. So great program. All right, here you go, Sparkler. Yay. Some new colors. There's some metallic on there, not shown in the well on the, on the card here, but and watercolor swirl available in 45 and 108 inch. Pin drop. These are just some of them. I mean, we've got so many. Riley Blake has so much. So, thank you. Thanks, thank you. Joe. Hey, scooch over. Well, you're going to want to go out because you cut your head okay, off Okay, okay. <laughs> I was holding Take the care. camera so your head wasn't cut off. He's so much taller than me. <laughs> well, after all of that fun, great excitement, and the great Jeff, that's going to be great. That's coming up soon. It's a good time to stock up on your basket, ba basics. Um... So let's talk about the giveaway. Earlier I showed you those books from Patience Griffin and she sent the signed copies specifically um, Wishing Quilt is a big one because that is brand new. It hasn't even been released yet so you have an advanced copy of that. You have a chance to win that and she signed a couple other of the books as well. Um, Maria's bringing me these lovely books. Thank you. So this one here your advanced copy. You can see signed, which is super cool. I always try to find signed versions of the books I read. And Maria, when you borrow some, you'll notice some of them are signed. <laughs> so this is a giveaway exclusively for Checker customers. You guys know the rules. You must be, like I said, a Checker customer, and you must be a member of our private Facebook group. We do post a link in the comments always to that, so if you're new and you haven't heard of the group yet, you haven't had a chance to join it yet, you are able to do that. The Market Share Social Quilting event is all month long. You will see me every Wednesday this whole month, as well as the first Wednesday in June. Um, Sasha, do we have any questions? Well, she looks, I'm just going to let you know you have until 5 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time this coming Friday, Friday the 13th, to register to win this week's giveaway. Friday the 13th will be good luck for somebody because you're going to get to win these. I think we might have answered everybody's questions. If we did not, we will make sure to get back to you as soon as we can. Sometimes we need to double check our info before we give you an answer. So thanks so much for tuning in, and you will see me and Jeff back here next Wednesday on uh, May 18th. Thanks so much.